Okay, good. So what's the answer to the question? What's the focal length? We don't even have to bother with the algebra. Okay. Uh, so this is, again, uh, a big help of using uh, our table uh, over here. So the answer is, uh, so what was the answer? What's the focal length? Oh, so the focal length is 30 centimeters, so 60 centimeters. Okay. So this is the focal length. We want to put the object over here. Okay. All right. Now, um, I don't know if you get full credit for that in the exam because you haven't shown. Uh, I don't know. If, uh, you might just write this table and say that we're uh, right between shrunk and 95, but that still might not be the full credit answer. So let's go through the algebra now. But at least now we have a way of checking our answer to make sure it's right. sign should we put on this number? Because it's a conversion device. We saw that converging devices are always positive. But it's important to be in the habit of always putting in the sign so that we think about it when it's negative. Okay. All right, so that's a good habit. Okay. And then, um, so and Yes, that's right. So, I mean, after doing this, I know that the image. I don't okay. All right, yeah, this is kind of tricky. So, it would be good to be able to get some credit just by using the table here. But let's work through the algebra. So, we know that the image is the same size mm -hmm. as the object. Now, we talked a couple seconds ago. Um, uh, about the relationship between magnification and image distance. Mm -hmm. So if the image is the same size as the object, what's the relationship between the image distance and the object distance? They're the same. They're equal, right? Actually, I guess we didn't do this precise case, but we said that if the image was magnified, then the image distance would be bigger. And we said that if the image was shrunk, then the image distance would be smaller. Well, then we didn't quite spell this out, but if the, image, uh, if the image is the same size as the object, then the image distance must be the same uh, as the object distance. Now, this is just in magnitude, so I'm putting the dots in here to show that it's only the magnitudes that are the same. So we know these are the same in magnitude. All right, uh, and now let's figure out the relation. But here, we're not supposed to put in magnitudes. We're supposed to put in signs as well. Um, so, uh, well, I guess we can go ahead and do that, though. So. So I'm going to plug in for S prime. Well, I know the magnitude of S prime, uh, uh, let's see, is going to be equal to the magnitude of S. Uh, I guess I'll work it over here. Signs are, signs are always kind of pesky, but is S positive or negative? Um, positive. How do we know? Because we said last time that in simple problems, object distance is always positive. In simple problems, object distance is always positive. All right, now, is the image distance going to be positive or negative here? Positive. And how do you know that? Um, because it is real. Yeah, this is how we know. We saw that a real image always is a positive image distance. It's not because of this, because this only said the magnitudes had to be the same. They didn't have to have the same sign, but this is a real image. So, if these are supposed to be, pos supposed to be positive, then we know that uh, not only are the magnitudes the same, but the sign values are also the same. They have the same sign. Signs are really one of the hardest things in all of physics. This is not, this takes some sophistication just to go this little step here, but all right. All right, so anyway, um, what should I write down here? Um, so one over S plus one over S. Yeah. 
Yeah, you could put it in a positive sign. But the upshot is just that s prime will be equal to s. All that work was just to see that s prime is going to be equal to s. Okay. positive number, and it has to because object distance are always positive. If this came out negative, we'd know we made an algebra mistake because of a simple problem, object distance can't be negative. And then here's... Yep. Anything else or are we done? Um, possibly. Possibly. Yeah, we're pretty much done. Object distances are always positive, so we're going to say this is the same answer we'd already predicted. Right. right? We'd already predicted from our table approach we'd get 60 centimeters. All right, and again, uh, I think the table is helpful here, even if you can't get full credit from that, because at least it helps you see what the right track is for the algebra. All right, well, this is a good problem to have in your notes and go back and try again. Um, this is more typical of the problems you'll see on exams. So all the problems that we did last time were kind of simple plug and chuck. We just, I, I just gave you uh, two of the variables, and you had to find the third one. That's a little too easy for an exam problem, so we have to step it up a notch here. So the yeah. tricky thing for me was, I guess, figuring out that the... Um, image distance was the same as the object distance. That because I the so image size was the same as the object size. Sorry, you were saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if I just look at that again, right. um, I know that it's the same because it's the same size as the object. So yeah, image is the same size. That image would be the same size as, I mean, the image distance would be the same size as the object. That's right. Yeah, that was that whole spiel that yeah. you can go back into your notes. The relationship, so basically, the relationship between the image distances is the same as the relationship between the image sizes. The relationship between s prime and s is the same as the relationship between h prime and h. Mm -hmm. When they said that this was the same size as the object, that told us that the magnitude of h prime was equal to the magnitude of h. Well, that means that the magnitude of the distances has to be equal as well. This is for the image size or height. Okay, so that was an important step. Uh, that gave us this equation over uh, here. So we got that same out. Uh, so I was talking earlier, um, when we went through this table here, and we saw that you'd have the same size here, I mentioned that um, we figured out this would be the same size just because it was in the border between shrunk and magnified. And I mentioned that everything we'd said here could have been proven by algebra, but it would be a lot more pesky. And you can see how much more pesky it is. OK. Uh, but it all comes, everything in here is provable from the lens mirror equation. It's all algebra. All right. Let's say that uh, the object is a doll. The object is a doll. And let's say we want the doll's image to look like this. We want the doll's image to look like this. So this is our goal. We want the doll's image to look like this. How should we orient the doll object? Should we orient it right side up or right side down? Um, How should we orient the object? Let's see. So there's two ways we could orient the object. We could orient it like this, or uh, or like this. We could hold the doll right side up or right side down, or upside down, right side up or upside down. Now, is our image going to be upright or inverted? Are we producing an, an upright or inverted image? Right. Sorry? An upright? Uh, oh. Yeah, now things get a little bit tricky here. Um, 
Let's see how how can we uh, express this? Is the image going to be pointing in? Uh, is the image going to be oriented in the same direction as the object or a different direction? So let's see where are we in our table here? So that's a converging lens. Mm -hmm. So um, we want something you said real. Mm -hmm. So where does that put us in the chart? Somewhere over here, and where exactly are we going to be? Uh, we want it to be. We still have all these same oh, conditions same as before. So I'm sorry, I should have said that. All sorry. the same conditions yeah. as before. Yeah. So, um, at twice the focal point. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a continuation of the same problem. Yeah. I should have said that. So